from UP Los Banos and my yeah, I'm Bibiling, Bibiling Leon from UP Diliman and so we would like higher education. Uh, welcome po Ma'am Nanda. Our next uh, discussant is uh, Dean, uh, once a Dean, always a Dean, ano po? Dean Alberto Laurito, dito na po ba siya? Mukhang lumabas. Lumabas. Okay. O sige, mauna na muna si... And ang uh, papakilala ko po ulit ay si Dr. Josdado M. San Antonio, Undersecretary for Curriculum and Instruction of the Department of Education. Sir, uh, magandang po. magandang hapon. Okay. Okay, ito pong program natin will run from 1.30 hanggang 3 o'clock. We will start with uh, by giving our discussion some 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 time to to provide us information on uh, their initiatives, particularly yung ginagawa nila sa kanila mga organizations. And then after that, uh, we will uh, have questions and answers. No? Uh, I think yung po ang uh, objective talaga ng forum na ito to be able to exchange yung mga information at yung mga questions nyo. Oh, yeah. Pakilala so, na natin si pakilala na natin yung fourth uh, Discussant natin, of course, uh, si Dean Alberto Laurito, who we know very well, is a member of the Technical Panel for Engineering and Technology, sa CHED, and the Chairman of the Technical Committee for Chemical Engineering. All right? Okay. Okay, partner. Oh, partner. Dapat si Boy and Chris daw to, pero... <laughs> oh, Boy and Chris. Anyway, All right. Uh, so we we can probably start when we when we sent uh, the invitation to our discussants. We asked them to prepare, let's say, five uh, five minute talks uh, uh, to just update us on the uh, initiatives of their respective institutions uh, with regard to engineering education. So probably we can start with Engineer Monsada. Can you give us updates on the Philippine application for full membership to the Washington Accord? I'm sure everybody here is waiting for some updates. Hello po, uh, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Good afternoon po. Uh, for information of everybody, Philippine Technological Council is a private, non-profit, non-stock organization. It is composed of 13 professional engineering organizations. Dalawa lang po yung major na trabaho ng PTC. The first one is registration of engineers under international registers. So when we talk about international registers, we have APEC Engineer Registry, we have the ASEAN Engineering Register, as well as the ASEAN Chartered Professional Engineering Register. The ASEAN Engineer Register is part of the ASEAN Economic Community uh, thing, while the APEC Engineer Register is part of the APEC uh, countries. The second work of PTC is actually accreditation of engineering programs according to the terms and condition of Washington Accord, as well as of the FIAP guidelines. These two benchmarks, Washington Accord is composed of 27 countries. PTC is one of nine provisional members. We became provisional in 2013 and we are still working on our full signatory status, and we are hoping that we will eventually be considered for full signatory status next year. We are finalizing things that are needed to fully comply with the requirements after having uh, convinced them that somehow our K-12 is already in place. Because that's, that's actually one of the major considerations why 
we could be a full signatory to the Washington Accord. Just to give you what Washington Accord is, this is a body of originally of six organizations representing six countries that agreed to recognize the substantial equivalency of the accreditation system as well as the educational system in those six jurisdictions. Today, there are 19 full signatories and nine provisional members of Washington Accord representing 26 jurisdictions or I would say uh, economies. No? And uh, this requires that our accreditation system must be substantially equivalent to the Washington Accord, which actually emphasizes, I think uh, Dr. Vea, the presenters this morning highlighted uh, the attributes of graduates which we are being espoused by the Washington Accord. And these are, of course, the knowledge, uh, the basic fundamental knowledge of engineering and the many soft skills no, that are being espoused as necessary for the 21st century. No. So I think the good news here is that uh, on the register, we have started to get Filipino engineers qualifications recognized mostly in the Middle East, in ASEAN, as well as in the U.S. Just last week, we got several Filipino engineers whose qualifications have been recognized by the U.S. as being professional engineers. This is one of the major uh, achievements that we have done so far. But of course, very limited pa ngayon dahil sa state of Nevada, Kentucky, Kansas, and uh, what's the other one? Uh, I forgot the other state. But basically, in these states, the qualifications of APEC engineer, Filipino APEC engineers have been recognized. Okay. Today, there are 19 institutions that have submitted their engineering programs for accreditation under the Washington Accord. Uh, 17 of them have completed the process and they have been given accreditation. Their programs have been given accreditation on different, at different levels. No? When I say level, uh, time duration of accreditation. Okay. Thank you. Salamat po, uh, Engineer Monsada. Next, we'd like to request naman si Ma'am Nanda. Kalimlim, uh, to discuss uh, or elaborate the vision of CHED uh, regarding the engineering education, particularly policies and uh, existing programs, ma'am. Yes. Okay, good afternoon. I'm Nanda Kalimlim uh, from the Commission on Higher Education and I'm handling engineering and technology, technology programs in terms of uh, development of policies and uh, curriculums. At CHED, we have um, to support the, the attainment of the membership to Washington Accord. We instituted that there should be an outcomes-based education uh, implemented in all engineering HEIs. If you notice, in 2008, we already included in our PSGs, or the Policies, Standards, and Guidelines, program outcomes that was adopted from the Washington Accord. And in uh, 2012, we have issued CMO 37, series of 2012. This is the implementation of an outcomes-based systems in all HEIs or higher education institutions offering engineering programs. And uh, at this moment, we are now, in 2017 also, we have already included the monitoring of the implementation of outcomes-based education for engineering because we, uh, um, we, we would like to see that all engineering HEIs 
will should have fully implemented OBE systems in their institutions. Um, we have targeted this to be in 2017, but as uh, we notice, it's slowly picking it picking up. So we are still uh, helping more institution on the implementation of this, and we're giving all our support to the uh, institutions that offers engineering programs. And we also have uh, aligned our our PSGs and the curriculums with the Philippine Qualification Framework, as the Dr. Preya mentioned a while ago. And uh, uh, right now, we have uh, activities that is uh, gearing towards uh, attainment of these um, projects and programs that we are implementing at GED. Thank you for that, Ma'am Nanda. Um, I would like to, we would like to hear next from uh, Dean Laurito. Uh, sir, what is the vision for Philippine engineering education in the next, next 15 years, considering what's the developments are uh, happening globally? Uh, before I answer that question, para naman akong ano dito, ano, uh, taro leader which is, of course, my hobby right now, being retired, by the way. Uh, just to update you what the technical panel is doing after we release yung mga CMOs for the... Diba 2017, we released all the CMOs for the different uh, programs. We are now trying to come up, and we're now even training more ARQUAT team members to use a unified evaluation form. What you will see probably uh, coming up out by January would be uh, an HEI updated form because we are now changing how we will evaluate uh, engineering programs by using a one form, one, one form, uh, no, uh, fit, fit all system. Whether you are uh, under permit, you're about to be uh, given COPC or government recognition, or you, are, you think you're qualified to become a COD or COE, you will use all one form for that. And this is because we, are, we have adopted the, the uh, form for COD, COE before into one such form. Uh, the, Criteria will remain the same. What are the criteria for evaluation? You have instructional quality, research and publications, extension and linkages, and then institutional aspect. But what we have changed would be the distribution. Uh, in the meetings of the, seven, of the different uh, panels, we were given now the leeway to to distribute the points, but we do not uh, add or reduce the, this uh, criteria. So for instructional quality, since we are really pushing for OBE, we, it is now worth 50 points. Research will now be 25 points down from 30, because we felt that really uh, to push those who are still starting their research, and in some are not able to get COD uh, po, uh, status because of research. So from 30, research is now 25, and then we maintain the same 20 and I think five for, uh, for extension and also institutional aspects. So that's the key change. And uh, we are asking for actually more volunteers for to train on how to use this system. Actually, we, we have conducted already the training for regions one, two, and three, and CAR. By next week, we're going to train our quads from uh, Visayas and Mindanao. And November 6 and 7 will be the turn of uh, NCR and Southern Luzon. Now, regarding, what, 15 years from now, I fear that if we're not listening clear, I mean, uh, closely to the presentations earlier, we really 
should be serious about our theme, re-engineering education. What, what, what are we teaching our, our, our students for? I think uh, the, the, the abilities have to meet the requirements of Industry 4.0, so we have to have a counterpart education 4.0 heavily focused on not only cognitive but also psychomotor and also affective skills for the students. And uh, I was really uh, talking earlier with Dr. Vea, perhaps we should also have one agreed common evidence from each school regarding the quality of their graduates and I was thinking really of using a portfolio system because a portfolio system will not only cover what they learn in the, in the school but also any other experiences they had focusing on, what they're, what, what, uh, focusing on our program outcomes. Uh, so that's what we are thinking on and maybe we can perhaps modify the requirements later on of CHED. Thank you. Uh in Laurito. In our uh, invitation to USEC San Antonio, we requested uh, DepEd to share their initiatives, programs, or policies aimed to further improve the readiness of STEM graduates of the senior high school program, especially those who will enroll in engineering. And uh, I understand uh, he has some presentation prior to or, or you'd like to say something? Thank you very much, Dean Arnold. Good afternoon, everyone. Alam nyo naman po lahat ng kasalanan ng Pilipinas, kasalanan ng mga teachers, at kami sa basic education, kami talaga yung, ano, si, talagang palaging sinisisi. And I'm sure kahit kayo po in your lives, you also cursed teachers in basic education for the kind of learners in your midst. But the Department of Education, which I've been serving for the last 34 years, since day one of my life as a, an industrial arts teacher um, in 1985, um, I believe that we have also done our part. And uh, the Department of Education, being a very dynamic government education, the biggest bureaucracy in the government, under the leadership of uh, Secretary Leonor Magdolis Briones, who herself is a highly reputed uh, educator at the higher education level in public finance and public administration. We've been trying very hard to make sure that the things we do will somehow improve the kind of learners we will produce for you, for the industry, and for the other, uh, for our society. And I feel that I think this is even a perfect time for me to find out from you if after the implementation of the K-12 program, there is a little improvement in the quality of learners you have now in your classrooms. Anecdotes uh, from friends indicate that those that actually took the strand, the track, that is congruent to their subjects now, meaning in case of engineering schools, those, those who graduated from STEM, tend to be better prepared. Sabi nila, if the track is congruent, if they did not take the same track, medyo daw mahirap. But anyway, bibilisan ko po ito. I, um, so, um, yeah, DepEd, our graduates are supposed to go to universities, are supposed to do, have options to do middle-level skills development, can be entrepreneurs, and can be employed themselves. Next slide po. And uh, our framework for our science and math curricula indicate that we are trying hard to make sure that the learners are equipped with critical and problem-solving skills, with uh, yes, scientific dis inquiry skill skills, um, applying knowledge of science and demonstrating scientific attitudes. So we try very hard to make sure that the basics of mathematics and science are developed among the learners we have. Next slide, please. And uh, the enrollment indicates that um, less than 20% of the cohort of those who opted to en enroll in universities actually chose uh, science, technology, engineering, and maths courses. And uh, um, they, these are the kids in our uh, senior high school cohort. We have less than 20% of those uh, doing the academic track. Next slide, Paul. 
And um, with me, I've been named as USEC for curriculum and instruction less than five months ago. Although, as I've said, I've been with DepEd for a long, long time. I was regional director for more than six years. When I was given this challenge, this one is not sought. The secretary actually identifies who should sit in that uh, in, in the execom as in charge of curricul for curriculum and instruction. I was overwhelmed, and I, I really had to think deeply: what should we do so that we can make the learners really learn? Because we acknowledge even our not results indicate that a significant number, more than two thirds of the learners, according to our not scores, are not proficient. And uh, so this is really a problem that uh, something is wrong with the quality of, of education. Although, as I've said, most of those that do engineering courses, in my own um, observation, are the, the better ones. The more, I mean, those that attended science high schools that are actually better than the rest of the learners. But we have this problem about quality and our the initiative that we have decided, if we are strategic, we have to focus our energy first and foremost on making all children learn how to read. I feel, although sabi ng mga kaibigan ko, you should also pay attention to numeracy. Sabi ko, yes, that's also important. But before we can even teach them anything else, we have to make sure that every learner, bawat basa, bumabasa, according to his grade. Kung grade 1 ka, you should be able to demonstrate reading fluency at the first grade level. Kung grade 12 ka, you should be fluent in reading at the level of the 12th grade. Next slide po. Uh, so, yes, mga information lang po to, what we did, there was a massive investment on um, tech, um, equipment, um, additional teachers, uh, etc. yung mga susunod pa. Classrooms were constructed, uh, items were also created, and next slide po. We are also yeah, providing textbook in issue yan, maraming errors. And I hope you will help us with the new scheme we are introducing. Uh, in Starting next year, we will tap the experts in helping us review our proposed learning resources. We will give you um, not really very generous uh, honoraria for helping us. But we feel that the old way by which DepEd has been reviewing learning resources has not been effective, considering that there are still questions and uh, issues against it. So we said, why don't we tap the high-level experts? We don't need to call you to workshops. We'll send our manuscripts to you. We give you deadlines. Send them back to us. You promise you will not squeal about the titles that you have reviewed. You will not disclose your, I mean, the, the information. And then we will provide you... Uh, the, the usual um, honoraria we provide to our reviewers. Perhaps higher because we will save on the cost of housing you in a resort or in a hotel where we feed and we provide you accommodation as well. We also provide computers um, as a way to really modernize um, the basic education um, in the Philippines. Next slide. Uh, yes, we science and math equipment. Actually, the, the office in charge is based in Cebu. And next slide. We feel that there's a need to have very strong guidance program services. And you know that the hindrance, we cannot hire. Even if we have items because the salaries offered for guidance counselors do not um, match the kind of uh, educational level that the guidance counselor possess. So uh, we've not been very effective. We feel that if there's a strong, effective guidance program, uh, it would be, uh, we would not have learners changing minds in the mid, I mean, when they are in universities or even in the senior high school programs. And then we allow participation in STEM Expo and Summit. We connect practitioners inside the classroom and we make sure that the kids who decide to become engineers are also properly guided. Next slide. And so we have partners that work with us. The other issue, I don't know if um, Malayan colleges is represented here. They, when I was regional director, they were saying there's a need to modify the uh, STEM track in the K-12 curriculum. I assure you, friends, that we are in the midst of reviewing the curriculum. There are issues like the STEM track as it is now is general, taken by both of 
by both learners who want to do engineering and medis medicine courses. But we know that the engineers would need more maths and those that wish to be health science professionals would need more health biological sciences and everything. So that one is an input that perhaps in the future even the STEM track will have sub-specializations on those planning to be engineers and those planning to be uh, medical doctors, uh, health professionals and others. We're considering that seriously. Thank you very much for and mabuhay. Salamat, uh, Yusek San Antonio. So there you have it, no? May mga overviews na na-present ang ating mga discussions. Now we go on to our uh, questions and uh, answers. Uh, but before that, let me just remind yung mga participants natin para for the sake of our uh, documentation also, no? First, I'd like you to introduce yourself and uh, institution. There are a number of uh, microphones uh, so floor. Yan ang papu dito. Uh, we want, second, uh, we want you to be direct in your questions. Wala pong paligoy, pal, pal, paligoy, ligoy. And number three, allow only one follow-up questions. Uh, pero pag may wala pong nagtanong, you can always come back. So, yun po, uh, very simple lang. So, sino po ang unang gusto magtanong? Pag hindi po kayo nagtanong, si Ma'am Babyling kasi ang magtatanong tsaka ako. But I'm, I'm sure given the overview, eh, may mga, I call this burning questions na, na gusto nyong itanong. And I think this is the all right opportunity. Yes, Ma'am. I'm Dr. Evangelista from Cebu Institute of Technology. I'm just wondering if this is the right forum for which I would ask something about ALS, Alternative Learning System. Is, can can, can the, the, somebody answer this? Because we have a problem in ALS, no? Because before, ALS without the senior high, ALS graduate are qualified to go into the undergraduate programs, no? But now, the latest when there was already, ALS, pro, ALS graduate are given, we say, promoted to senior high or college because Ched also said that it depends on the school, the higher education institution, if they will accept ALS graduate. I understand that the ALS graduate are the test, the evaluation, the accreditation of ALS are the old, which is, uh, to accelerate them to junior, uh, from junior high to college. But since there is already senior high, is it that the accreditation of this ALS graduate now, who passed, have they changed the evaluation accreditation to fit into the graduate of senior high so that they can qualify to college? Mom, actually, the senior high component of the ALS is now being developed. The curriculum is in place the resources, the materials that we need so that we can offer uh, senior high senior high school via ALS. Um, but, most likely, the, the, yeah. for now, yes. I feel that yeah, the ALS, results of the ALS exams is just for, for senior, senior high school. High. But so grade 11 and 12. If it's or, perhaps it is just respecting the universities on their you know, autonomy on yes, because, whether to take in because graduates. Because on their, on their rating sheet, it will say, uh, promoted to senior right or if there is a uh, according yeah, to we'll, we'll review the policy ma'am thank you yes. very much for that observation so, i'll discuss this with my team yes because if the parents will really quarrel with us if we don't accept them and we said you are qualified to senior high if you want to enroll in our school so the parents will give us the chat memorandum that is for the school to accept them to college with our bridging program so that's the problem because the parents are quarreling with us. Yeah, thank you po, ma'am. Dadagdagan ko po yung rules natin, no? I'd like you to indicate who you want, who you're directing your questions to, no? Next question po. Ah, okay. Mer meron pa po, sorry, may dadagdag po si ma'am. Uh, 
actually we have not um, talked about that yet, Chad. Maybe Chad and um, Deb Ed should talk about and how to go about it. Are there any other questions? Um, yes, sir. Dr. Bea. Good afternoon. Our information is that uh, ABET has added research as one of the, among the graduate attributes. And we don't know whether it's Washington Accord yet or not requirement. Uh, so in our next cycle, we're preparing for that. So, uh, there might be two conflicting directions here where we reduce the number of points for research. But if uh, PTC, after looking at this, decides to also emphasize research, then what should we, what should we do? And for Chet, I hope that even if you, know, you reduce the number of points for research, you will not be shy in supporting research because you know, uh, it may be that the accreditation might might require that. So this is for anybody except USEC. <laughs> At the moment, PTC's uh, accreditation criteria does not include research. Because among the members of the Washington Accord, only one member incorporate research as a criteria as a criterion, rather. I don't know whether after the review, there's an ongoing review today between uh, International Engineering Alliance and the World Federation of Engineering Organizations, which is composed of 87 countries, whether research will eventually be incorporated. Although, Personally, I don't see that it will be incorporated as part of the basic uh, criteria for Washington Accord. Uh, perhaps the, the panel should consider, because uh, if we are talking of BS programs, that's, I was just emphasizing when we identify COD, COE, we're implemented it based on BS programs. And definitely those who will get, those who will really uh, get higher points for research will be those on the university typology. So there's a discussion on whether typology can also be connected to the distribution of, of points. Because CHED is really mandating the battery trifold function, the buying instruction, research, and extension or community service. So that's given for us educators. Now I think PTC is focused naman on employability and being com globally comparable. That's why uh, really they're meant to, to, tar to target yung BS graduates. And not all BS graduates can say would like to do, you know, really go up and you know, have uh, be full-time researchers. So I think this is really, again, an opportune time to think about how do we infuse yung typology ng institution doon sa requirements then ng ating ano, uh, evaluation or assessment system. Okay, some more questions? Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon. I'm uh, Feli Altalagiri, University of San Agustin. So I think Ma'am Nanda may answer this question. This is about the Supreme Court ruling on Filipino, the two courses, the Filipino, uh, two Filipino courses. Uh, I think there is a confusion among schools what to replace. What uh, courses will replace the two Filipino courses? Because in some schools, they uh, replaced uh, this with electives, the technical electives. Uh, in some schools, uh, we, uh, what is this? Uh, 
there is an advice to to select from the gen ed elective courses and uh, in the gen ed elective courses i think most of them are uh, not really that uh, technical and uh, one fac one of our uh, chair uh what is this suggested that we offer technical writing because we found out that this is not uh, found anymore in the new curriculum so what is uh, your advice okay. thank you uh, when we developed the curriculum for the engineering the um the slot for the Filipino is placed under the general electives. And um, I think it should be best if we, uh, we um, change Filipino to an elective from the GEC. Uh. In the case kasi of uh, our chemical engineering technical committee, we, we are saying that yung technopreneurship will be uh, parang one of the replacements for these two Filipino. Uh, but uh, really, uh, take note, the, the, the different theses are monitoring really more your your professional uh, programs and we'll let perhaps the technical uh, panel on gen ed to answer such you know, we cannot really answer for them because in the first place as you know uh, they, they, were, they were the ones who really require uh, had the requirement for this gen ed Pwede ba magtanong? I'm now wearing the hat kasi of ano, e, e pa, e, pa, former Pate president. By the way, for the young ones, you didn't know I was a Pate president before. And I, I would like to just confirm my ano, suspicion na because of the 50 units uh, gen ed ano, uh, courses, that are now mandated in our four-year uh, curriculum, that's practically a year already lost in our uh, preparation for our supposed to be outcomes-based uh, graduates. Can we have statistics among our PAES members on the impact of, number one, yung nga yung STEM preparation vis-a-vis uh, -vis mortality in is the sec I think we have already implemented calculus one twice already am I correct so can we have some concrete uh, numbers to show I mean to show Chad on the impact of uh, being easy on non-STEM Uh, graduates taking uh, straight engineering without because they're even saying you 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 can have no remediation so I, I'd like to get the statistics on mortality of our you know, first year how 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 the um, this change in this uh, how how this gen ed courses have impacted on them because all of them are three unit courses if if we if the panel for for gen ed they're already important for total development we will not debate that but the mere fact is they're taking time i mean three units uh three hours a week for our students i wonder how it went i, I want can, can i ask the pious as uh, danny <laughs> to to give us facts and then from this information we can perhaps write formally, Chad, about, because we should be a force in, you know, in trying to, because we are CQI, di ba? OB tayo. So we should inform them already about what's happening so that 
the next batch of uh, freshmen will not be affected. Uh, hi, sir. Good afternoon. I am Danny Molina uh, from Central Philippine University and uh, currently the president of the Philippine Association of Engineering Schools. Uh, in most of our meetings, most of our board meetings, uh, one of the things that uh, we usually discuss is how freshman students uh, perform inside the classroom. Uh, freshman engineering, and it's a very uh, and it's a common problem nationwide that our freshman students are not prepared to take calculus subject. They have a very weak background on pre-calculus. Uh, take the case for example in our university, um, we do not teach calculus immediately, but rather we go back to teach our students the pre-calculus subjects from algebra, trigonometry, analytic geometry, solid, things like that. And it takes us a longer time. Although these students that we admit into engineering in our university are all STEM graduates. Yeah, they're all STEM graduates. And uh, those who are non-STEM and still would like to pursue engineering, we have a bridging program for them. But even those who are already graduates of STEM have a very poor background in pre-calculus. So in short, the mortality rate is very high. Uh, like this semester, uh, we are having problem because mo almost like 60% of our graduates are failing in calculus. Yes, that's true. Calculus, physics, like that. So uh, our cons uh, the thing that we would like to convey to DepEd is that uh, now with all these statistics uh, being uh, given, uh, we hope that there will be like what you mentioned, sir, uh, the continuous quality improvement. Now, what are they doing after hearing all these things? We hope that the third cohort of the STEM graduates will be much, much better than the first two cohorts of the STEM graduates. They will be more ready to take engineering. That We will not take like two months or even half of the semester spending time reviewing for pre-calculus subjects. Uh, you did not. Yeah. Well, what about my my concern? Whether these failures are also uh, caused, maybe uh, partly by them also taking, you know, uh, other I mean, uh, gen gen ed courses. Hindi walang impact yung gen ed courses sa mortality. It's really the background in pre-calculus. I think the gen ed uh, subject is not much a problem. It's more on their preparation to take the calculus subjects. The pre-calculus, they have a very weak foundation. Um, thank you very much Bo, for raising that point. But as I have uh, mentioned earlier, we are in the process of actually, um, I'm very serious about considering a separate specialization for those intending to be engineers in those intending to be um, medical doctors or uh, um, health professionals because as it is now our senior high school stem track um, applies to both kind of learners so I feel that there should be a stronger math uh, focus on those intending to be engineers in stronger stronger biological and physical sciences for those uh, intending to be medical doctors or health professionals see yeah, I was thinking kung, kung di muna kaya ng DepEd to really do the, the ano, bridging or parang if you're doing bridging to help this freshman sana naman lang i-reduce din yung units nila of this gen ed which as as you can see if I if I I, I think all of this can be delivered yung nga kaya nga meron model dito this can also be de delivered I mean I mean by ano by ano some other means okay yeah yeah please uh, mr president okay sir uh, related to readiness of uh, high school graduates for college courses i think one thing that uh, we also wish for uh, students uh, to be developed is their uh, attitude their maturity because it seems that when they entered college, first year college, uh, their, their attitude is still like high school, where actually in the old curriculum, they should be third year 
engineering students already. So that's, I think, one of the common problems that we are still encountering is uh, their maturity should be developed that when they enter college, they have already that mentality now. Oh, we are already college. This is already serious business. Yeah. And I don't know whether this is something that we must accept. This is Gen Z. Uh, we are trying to 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 really you know motivate they have different and uh, we because we always connect our quality of students but this they have other they have also they have also other traits that will make them succeed so i don't know there are millennial faculty here who so, so should better understand them how do we handle such uh, such Gen Z. This is a problem that should be addressed by, you know, understanding the, the learner. Ako uh, uh, that's uh, actually an input that I need. Pero I suggest, perhaps, I don't know if it's going to be us who should do the research, but in my uh, previous life as a regional director, I was so engaged with uh, universities in the area. So immediately after we had the first cohort of graduates entering universities, I actually made uh, person, whenever I had the chance, I would ask professors, presidents of universities in, about the kind of learners they, had, they have now. And they would say um, that those that actually did the track congruent to the courses they have now uh, are, seem to be better prepared compared with the 10-year uh, basic education cycle of the past. And the other thing that I learned from them was they, they said they seem to behave more in more matured ways. I'm referring to Calabarzon. You know? So if your, if your university is in Region 4A, those are my encounters when I was regional director. But that one, that information is yeah, something that uh, we will have to look into. But as I've said, the curriculum is actually so designed to address all the skills, young thinking skills, communication skills, and um, even the soft skills that are expected of a 21st century citizen now. And we, we have that kind of curriculum. We're also looking into what makes us effective in shaping or nurturing these kind of skills among the learners. Be assured that we are also serious about implementing research-based and evidence-based uh, interventions. So we're, we're actually currently looking into how we could best develop learners who are possessed with uh, 21st century skills, the soft skills particularly, which defines whether they would be successful or not in their lives even after uh, being uh, able to finish university degrees or ano, sabi ng literature, yun daw ang nagdi-define ng ano, edge nila eventually in the future, especially with Gen Z. Z. Of course, uh, nakakatuwa po yung mga Gen Z. I have three sons who are Gen Z. Palagi kaming nag-aaway. We don't agree on how to study very well. Ano. Kasi nakikita ko, nag-aaral daw, naka-tune yung isang ano, channel ng, ng screen sa computer, kung ano-ano pa. Sabi ko, can you, how can you... Eh, siyempre yung aral natin, yung mga ka-generation ko, nakatago sa kwarto at nag-iisa lang. Ano, nag sila, ano, uh, they do a lot of things simultaneously. Tapos pag deadline na, sasabihin, oh, I'm, I need to finish this um, at 11.59. Sabi ko, oh, anong oras na? 7 o'clock. Yesterday, you were so relaxed. Sabi ko, yeah, sarili kong anak po ito, ano, fifth year now at the College of Architecture. Uh, hindi ko nasasabihin kung saan, but... Um, Ganyan siya, sir. Ano? So may issue rin talaga sa ano. No, you have to understand. I don't know, I'm a baby boomer. Can you imagine that baby boomer? But I consider myself parang millennial. Eh. <laughs> I have to be a millennial if, 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 if I'm a senior in education. I have to understand the millennials. And now, I'm siguro senior. Eh. Kasi the generation Z na. So, my, my point is, yung nga, uh, first, meron po kayong, I saw you have a STEM summit. Meron kayong, pwede bang sumali yung PAES doon para we, yung, nga, yung mga inputs from here can perhaps be shared in that summit. But 
really uh, being a take me 43 years in in, in engineering education masyadong they they want to ano kasi finish engineering they learn they want to say i learn smart but the problem really of our recent batch of uh, graduates they are siyalo in retention they they are not really able because they are after how how do i pass rather than the importance of their learning to their you know to their profession because in the first place they are not even sure whether they will be remaining in that profession that's one characteristic of millennials mga teachers dito na millennials i'm sure you are really not committed as us to stay with education am i correct yung pa yung mga attitude na ngayon, hindi naman ako magtatagal, I want to try other things. Eh. Mga may, may bucket list lahat yung mga yan. Eh. So, I mean, these are the things that we have to incorporate with when we try to, ano, to, to design our curricula. Share ko lang po yun sa UPLB. Uh, sa UPLB po, uh, relatively, mataas daw yung passing namin sa mathematics. Uh, kaya lang, Yung problema po ng mga estudyante namin is yung physics at yung chemistry. So, hindi lang po yung math ang dapat tinitingnan natin. So, dapat po yung iba din, eh, dapat balance yan. So, for your information. Ipa-plug in ko na din, mamayang uh, parallel session, meron po tayong isang paper on effect of K-12 curriculum on the first year uh, performance ng no mathematics nila sa, sa UST. So, yun po. Partner. Uh, may, mayroon pa po ang questions. Yes, Dr. Vea. Napaka-exciting po ng ating discussion ngayon. At ang... <laughs> yes. Uh, as you may know, uh, the enrollment in many private schools dropped in 2018. Uh, except for a few schools. The suspicion are generally low, no? Then we'll look at the CHED data. If you were to believe CHED data, the SUCs fared no better their total enrollment also dropped. The only sector that increased enrollment were the LUCs. But then they're so, they have so few students that even if the percentage is significant, in absolute terms, konti lang. And it will not explain the drop in both the SUCs and the private uh, schools. Now, our, our school, Mapua and the Malayan schools, uh, well, we suffered a drop. But we have a, except for in Dabao, no? Uh, we have a conjecture, I wonder whether the USEC can uh, confirm this or not. We have a conjecture that because STEM is difficult to implement due to the cost of laboratory equipment and due to the uh, qualifications of faculty members to teach uh, STEM, grade 11 and 12, at least during that time, uh, could it have been possible that we were not able to offer the number of STEM strands in all the senior high schools as we should have. Ibig sabihin, many schools just refrain from offering STEM. And our conjecture is, on top of the other factors which we still have to understand, a STEM-focused uh, university like ours could have suffered from the lower number, uh, walang, walang benchmark eh. But we feel that there, there, there could have been many more uh, schools offering the STEM as STEM strand. So is this something that, uh, that DepEd uh, data would uh, bear out or have you discussed this or? Yeah, thank you. Um, I don't have the data now, sir, but I can provide um, the data to, through the Malayan of officials in Kalamba. I have contacts with them. Please remind them to actually send me an information. So are they here? Those uh, doing the senior high school program, uh, I, can, I can provide uh, the data that is needed. But I, I am also enlightened by that information because we, we thought that the senior high school program has actually been helpful in um, encouraging more youngsters to, to pursue higher level education. Of course, our own statistics um, demonstrate the fact that um, the enrollment on top of post-grade 10 
has significantly increased compared with the previous university enrollment in the past. And we feel that this is um, um, something that's uh, advantageous to our society, that our Filipino youngsters now are at least having 12-year um, education instead of the previous data that they, they only reached grade 10 and a few um, go to universities. That's as far as the Department of Education is concerned. That's the data I have. That the, the learner, the Filipinos um, who are earning 12-year education, formal education, are, have been in, increased because of the senior high school program. But as to the impact on uh, the enrollment in universities, um, can we also perhaps explore whether this is a worldwide trend that the, the STEM courses, even if we, we actually offer scholarships, I know DOST has regular scholarships, perhaps we'll also have to check if the DOST is able to fill up all the slots, because this could be an indicator as well that uh, there is something with the way we are able to attract learners into the sciences and engineering courses, which we know would be very important if we want to, to, to become economically prosperous. I believe uh, that we have to, yes, have a lot of Filipinos who are scien scientists and engineers. Or tama kayo yung data ng Ernst and Young. We were discussing it earlier. Na to some companies, businesses, uh, it's not the diploma that will count in the future. It's the skills that they need for for their positions. Kaya nga, we should be very, I mean, us as PAES, we, we are schools and we have to stay relevant on what our stakeholders need. Eh. Yun nga, eh, baka, sabi nga, I don't know. <laughs> but I think it's I think you're right, Ray. It's more of kulang yung yung number ng inputs natin. So talking about the population, uh, incoming population ng mga freshmen to the engineering schools. Uh, I also wonder if the if the free tuition um, law for HEIs uh, has something to do also, or has an effect on the in, uh, enrollment. Uh, in some areas po siguro, this free tuition fee is really one of the problems of the private HEIs because as we go around in the institutions, they are complaining to us that they cannot have uh, much enroll enrollees because their, their neighbor, neighbor institutions, the SOOCs and the LOOCs, are f offering free tuition education. Um, but I'm wondering too, because at Ched, we will not give that free tuition fee to SOOCs and LOOCs who do not have the um, compliance or the certificate of program compliance. And most of the institutions that we visited uh, still do not have that COPC. So, hindi naman po siguro ganong kalakas yung impact nito. Are there any other questions? From the yes, sir. Engineer Mandirico of Central Philippine University, where you see. Uh, engineering was reduced from five years to four years. And based on my observation, uh, the number of units required for engineering courses was significantly reduced. My question is will this not affect? the quality of our graduates, our future engineers. This question is directed to Engineer Lauret. Uh, again, personal opinion, not the opinion of Tibet. Uh, because uh, for all, all this time, we connect kasi units with really uh, sorry, faculty salary. You know, I think we should look at really uh, learning units and how to really focus on our important courses in the curriculum. 
how we can really have more I don't know uh, alternative ways to to really deliver the the outcomes. Because my own opinion is it's not the hours that count. It's how you you innovate in in in, in delivering your student uh, to learn the desired outcomes of the courses. There are many. I mean, sorry, uh, the, the internet, the web is here, and there are really many ways to motivate students without really uh, giving them or give, putting a number of units to better learning. Maybe that is what I mean. Uh, to me, dapat talaga, the, we follow. Kaya there's also this study on credit uh, across different countries and they're surprised how come we have so so big number of units in our uh, just because we we more or less base our also somehow our number of units on on how the the faculty will also be be you know, be paid that's why but really if we plan this as learning i don't know learning units rather than maybe we can have uh, again I'm, I'm I'm being radical here but I think <laughs> to, you do not pass a student until you you he, he has the proper learning units we, we have to grade by the outcomes rather than you know, by simple you know, simple again averaging I think that's where the the quality you know, fails. Eh. Ang grading kasi natin parang based sa mga average ng scores rather than focusing on what abilities the students based on the outcomes we're declaring per per course. Okay, so with the, with the OBA, you 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 feel that uh, that can be that can be addressed. Uh, but uh, when you mentioned kanina yung uh, do, do, is there a need to reduce the number of GE courses units? Oh, wala pa akong, po yung mga tao dito. Wala akong nakita ng response sa, sa PAES. Pero perhaps kasi y it could also be solved by you trying to I mean look at the gen ed. Kung, kasi when we say we, are, we, we lack units and ang ating alternative di ba, is to add one more year eh, eh siguro may mas may problema tayo sa parents naman noon i think if you ask me if you want really to be a trimester perhaps ship will probably help you kung semestral kayo my concrete solution is uh, a trimester system probably would deliver these units better or this learning better Pero hindi pa tayo sa naidon, kasi that will mean less vacation on the part of those who are in semestral, and faculty also need those that time, that time to rest. Uh, are there any other questions? Yes, the doctor. Good afternoon. I am Engineer Benedicto in Fortaleza from TUP. Um, kung mapapansin natin, sir, sa architecture, um, five years pa rin sila. Um, baka po pwedeng uli ang engineering din eh. Five years din. <laughs> Um, ang naging problema, naging issue doon, yung naging sinasabi, sobrang dami ng GEC. Pero kung tutusin mo, yung mga GEC ngayong lumalabas, nakakatulong din naman talaga sa bata. Oo. Uh, kaya lang, sobrang dami nga. Matakin mo, 50. Tapos, four years itong program natin. So baka pwede tayong mag-meet sa gitna, gawing four and a half years or five years uli. But by the way, uh, the chat really is just setting minimum standards, di ba? So, wala namang mag, ano, mag I don't know, uh, Nanda, can you clarify? Pwede bang magdagdag sila ng more than four years? Uh, 
Ah, uh, di ba? Kasi minimum to, di ba? So, if you really say you want to, you know, eh, Um, I guess uh, architecture, kaya po five years. Yung one year is for the um, uh, industry experience. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, when we develop kasi the curriculum for the engineering, we presume na yung, yung mga basic courses, mga foundation courses, na ibigay na doon sa K-12. So, presume na okay na yung mga basic courses. So, ang ginawa ng uh, technical panel is to develop a four-year degree programs. As to the uh, additional one year, uh, wala naman po kami ganong inisyo na policy on that. Pero kayo din, pagka ginawa yung five years yung courses, yung program nyo in engineering, yung iba four years, sino po kaya matatalo? Estudyante na po ang magdidikta niyan, business, business wise kasi hindi ano yun. Saka kung i-essay kasi natin yung gendered courses, mathematics for the modern world. Magkakalculus, tasabayan mo nun, no? So, parang ano eh, Pwede naman habang tinuturo yung calculus and explain mo na how this is used in the, magic, in the modern world. I mean, we can really integrate some of these gen ed courses in some of our own. Understanding the self is really to me psychology. It's really about psychology. I mean, preparing. And these are not taught but, you know, experienced by the student through probably case case studies of others. Maybe you can, I know, you can have uh, case studies of uh, freshman students, I mean, having problems with their... These are things, understanding the self. Are we in the proper course? Something like that. Uh, to me, ethics, for example, uh, iba pa yung ethics yata dito sa professional ethics natin. Sana... Uh, Paes can say we can find equivalent for this and therefore we are appealing na sana minimum units na lang nito maging one or maybe two para we can have more remediation courses and we have more professional courses na we sacrificed because really economics naman yung magdagdag tayo ng one more year for both private and even SUCs. Sa akin, these are practical solutions I'm recommending. So, uh, uh, when you mentioned about PAES uh, making recommendations. I think, uh, was that a year ago, two years ago, that we, 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 we made a proposal to CHED that uh, PAES be allowed to uh, seat, uh, have one seat at least? In the yung, uh, I still have, mere, mere, sana may resolution tayo in this conference about, but, but this has to be supported by data. Eh. We have to support this by data. I'm sorry, pinaglaban to sa technical panel level, kaya emotional ako hanggang ngayon na natalo kami nung gen ed na panel na this really stuck with the 50 units, but that's it. But we were hoping that we are flexible at CHED na knowing that these are the effects of this gen ed, sana ma, we, we find another way to really resolve it. Really, 50 units killing us eh, sa professional courses. That's very, that's a fact. May follow-up ako, sir. Follow. <laughs> Hindi ko alam ko pa paano sabihin ito kasi maring maraming masaktan. <laughs> Sige. Um, kasi, ang ano namin sa mga bata, pagpasok sa kolehiyo, parang napapansin namin na key generation Z or ano siyang generasyon, parang nawala na talaga yung mga basic na pag-uugali. You know? Um... Ang napapansin namin doon, sir, kasi dumaan sa K-11 and K-12, aminin mo natin sa hindi, yung mga, yung mga teachers doon, ah, hindi sila handa para hawakan siguro yung mga, mga bata. Kaya ang, 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 ano nga, ang, ang tuksuhan nga eh, parang itong mga batang ito, parang napag, napaglaruan sa K-11 at saka K-12. Oo, yung, yung gano'n, kasi sa mata limawa, magtuturo kami ng higher math. Yung uulitin mo pa, 
Kasi wala natutunan sa K11, K12. Parang parang ganun ang ano namin. So, yung prepared ni siguro ng teacher din. Isa sa mga factors yon Kaya ang mga ugali ng bata parang... Kanino niyo po? Eh, ah, hindi naman address. siguro walang natutunan. Baka magalit oh. si... <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Actually, uh, kanina sinabi ko na po na I'm a, I, I know na kami sa DepEd, kami talaga ang dapat sinisisi sa lahat ng nangyayari sa mundo. Uh, to be very honest, nag-confess po ako sa pare. Sabi ko, Father, I'm so disturbed. Kasi kako, yung mga, mga bata, yung mga Pilipino, lahat yan dumaan sa kamay ng teacher ng DepEd. Pero hindi marunong mag-behave sa escalator. Hindi marunong magtapo ng basura sa tamang tapunan. Kahit may mga forum na ganito, hindi alam kung paano itatago yung mga rappers ng sandwich. Kasalanan niya ni teacher. Sabi po sa akin ng pare, this one is really a, a real story. Hindi po ito ano, katang-isip. And I felt better. Sabi niya, hindi naman DepEd lang ang dapat sinisisi. Nandyan din yung pamilya. Nandin yung simbahan. There are other societal institutions that should help us nurture Filipinos for a brighter future. And ako po talaga, pagkatapos ng confession na yun, I felt better. Sabi ko, mukhang hindi na ako magtatagal sa purgatorio dahil sa mga batang na produce ng DepEd na hindi makasalanan. But uh, kidding aside, uh, DepEd, especially now, we, we acknowledge that the quality of education is actually you know, uh, in dire straits. And as I mentioned during my initial presentation, I said, we have to go back to even the most basic skill of reading. Kasi yung higher maths na yan, hindi yan maintindihan kung hindi marunong magbasa ang ating mga bata. So, even among ourselves, yung mga senior high school, junior high school, sisisihin si grade 1, si grade 3, kasi ipinasa daw. So we are actually um, actually becoming more intense in our information dissemination that the kids who are not ready to move to the next grade should not move. Kasi parang may misconception din na mayroon pa rin mass promotion, which is not found in any DepEd guideline. There is no DepEd order encouraging mass promotion. But the ang ch challenge po talaga namin, I don't know if I should be sharing this with our partners in higher education is, we have beautiful policies. Even the curriculum as designed sounds good. When I shared it in one uh, forum outside of the Philippines, people approached me and said, you have a beautiful curriculum uh, and if done properly, uh, your graduates should be ready for the 21st century. Pero the, what makes the difference? How it becomes real in the lives of the learners inside the classroom. So, ang challenge po sa akin ngayon, uh, as I've said, I've been with DepEd for the longest time. I mean, 34 years, uh, going 35. Ay paano yung mga pulisiyang ito magiging totoo sa buhay ng mga bata? And I, I'm aware of the, actually, the, the realities. Una, yung time on task. Mayroon po kaming policy, uh, Learners should learn, should be taught uh, at least 180 days every year. But I know that ang mga kasama naming mga nasa baba, kahit ano na lang gagawin para wag na muna magturo. And that's very hard to stop. Kasi kung ano-ano mga activities, mga celebrations, etc. Et na pinagkakaabalahan. But... Uh, Binibenta ko na po ang idea sa executive committee. There are 14 of us, including the secretary and the ASEX and the USEX, that we have to be very strict with the time on task. Ang feeling ko po, having been a former teacher myself, a former principal, I did not do anything different from many. I mean, different in terms of uh, deviating from the policies. But I just made, made sure that the teachers were teaching in the schools where I was principal, sorry for the reference, my learners were doing great. They're, they were winning in competitions. They were, when they enter universities, the teachers who were my former teachers in, in the school in my area would say, iba yung mga estudyante nyo sa ibang cohort ng public schools. Wala naman kami ginawa. Tinuruan lang namin every day. 
ng mga dapat ituro. And I must admit, hindi pa ito yata nangyayari sa karamihan sa aming mga paaralan. So, I agree po na yeah, there is a big job to do so that we can make the Filipinos really qualified to compete in the 21st century. And we need the help of everyone. Kayo rin po may matutulong sa amin, just like what I suggested, perhaps even in reviewing our learning resources, you will not close your doors when we invite you to take a look at our proposed learning resources, Give your, share your expertise, Kanina si Dean, sinasabi niya kahit sa training ng teachers, baka pwede rin po kayong uh, magbigay ng ano, bahagi nyo upang ang mga science and maths teachers namin would actually be learning from the real experts from the academy instead of our own homegrown mga trainers for certain areas. Siguro po, yeah, it's high time that we do things differently because the things we've been doing for for the recent years have not been producing the right um, results. Although, kami po, ang tentative explanations namin sa pagbaba ng proficiency, it's, it's part of the birthing pangs. I mean, when we introduce education reform, I've been reading the literature, it always normally would, you know, have negative impact initially on the, on the outcome, in, on the academic achievement. Although, yun na nga, Bakit umaangat na siya dati tapos bumaba sa nat ngayon? Ang, iba, ang isang paliwanag po, the way we administer the test was different from the past. Baka dahil sa bago na yung sinusunod na namin yung trends in assessing 21st century skills, hindi pa rin nga na-equip yung teachers kung paano ituturo ang 21st century skills. Uh, ito na po ang nangyari. So our current curriculum review, other than determining whether it's congested or not, includes whether the intended curriculum becomes the attained curriculum. Kasi ang dami-dami pong klase ng curriculum, di ba? Intended, implemented, assessed, achieved. Baka wala pang alignment. Isang ano po rin yan, isang reality that we have actually identified as a possible factor. Na dahil min somehow minadali, gusto natin mag-implement ng K-12, binilisan, mabuti na lang magagaling yung mga naglagay, pero marami pong na-overlook. Like, Kahit yung alignment ng mga skills, hindi siya parang synchronized across learning is areas. Yung idea of integration ay hindi masyadong maliwanag. So, liliwanagin naman po. At yun na nga, ongoing yung process and we will need your voice. Maganda po itong opportunity that I've been sent by the secretary here. So, I could quote you without having to mention your names about the, the impression of the engineering educators as far as our science and technology graduates are concerned. So, hindi po ako nagagalit. I really appreciate honest feedback because if we don't acknowledge realities, we will pretend to be doing well when we are not. So, ano po? Uh, Sama-sama na po tayong uh, hanapan ng paraan para sa, hindi naman tayo tumagal sa purgatory pagdating ng panahon. <laughs> Salamat po. Maraming. Maraming maraming salamat, Yusek. Uh, we have uh, only 10 minutes left and Ma'am Carla has uh, the last question. <laughs> no, it's not a question. Uh, maybe we can start this uh, uh, from, uh, from the DepEd, Mr. San, uh, San Antonio. Paes maybe we would start this uh, problem, no? Kasi most of our institutions naman have senior high school, di ba? So I think, unang naisip ko dyan, lahat ng magtuturo ng senior high, so mathematics, physics, chemistry, lalo na kung institution mo, may engineering, dapat yung engineering, engineering faculty mo ang magturo sa senior high. But ang problema doon, minsan with the same institution, the engineering din hindi pwedeng makailang sa senior high. Isa sa problema yun eh. But if PAES would start that, would initiate that, na hindi kami papayag na hindi engineer sa magtuturo ng senior mathematics, chemistry, and physics, then mababawasan yung problema. Thank 
you very much, ma'am. So, uh, since we have very limited time, talagang nag-uproar because of that. Uh, but, uh, May gustong yes. po sumagot sa inyo? May, meron po bang gustong sumagot? Nasabi na naman ni Sir yung mga uh, steps na gagawin. Uh, so, uh, yeah, he's looking at yung uh, training, ano, reviewing yung skills ng current ano, eh, ng system. Okay. Questions po? I, I saw so, Kayo po muna. They, you're next. Good afternoon. I am uh, Engineer Ronald Villaverde from uh, Tugigraw City. Uh, gusto ko lang mag-react dun sa sinabi ni Ma'am Carla kanina. No? So, sa mga schools dito sa Manila, wala sigurong problema yung senior high. Especially, if for one school, you have your senior high so that you have a ready uh, uh, enrollees for college. But the fact is that in the provinces, mas maraming graduates talaga galing sa mga public schools. Kasi hindi naman ganun karami yung mga pan eh, yung mga senior high, ay mga private schools, I mean. Uh, ito yung concern ko. Uh, nabanggit ko lang yung kung kay Ma'am Carla kanina, pero yung talagang itatanong ko uh, kay uh, Sir Yusek. Anong plano ng DepEd para dun sa mga curriculum? Especially, nabanggit ko nga, ang dami-daming mga public schools sa probinsya. At karamihan sa kanila, ang inong offer nila, gas. Dahil ang sinasabi nila ganito, uh, kung hindi ka sure sa kukunin mo sa college, mag-gas ka na lang. So, karamihan ng mga graduates ng senior high sa public schools, I don't know sa ibang region, pero sa region 2, karamihan gas. Tapos, andun yung pronouncement na kahit anong strand ka galing, pwede kang kumuha ng kahit anong program sa college. Eh di, na churva na siya. No. So, wala bang balak ang, uh, kasi may haka-haka noon na parang balak ng DepEd na ayusin yung one, ayusin yung stranding na yan. Kasi dun sa pronouncement na kahit anong strand ka, pwede kang kumuha na kahit anong program sa college. What's the use of having strands then? Di ba? Kung ganun din lang. So, yun yung kay Yusek. Second, uh, yeah, address ko naman sa chat. Hindi ko alam kung sinong, uh, kwan, sinong who gets to decide as to how many uh, test grantees, yung tertiary education uh, scholarship, uh, oh, subsidy, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, who gets to decide from chat kung gaano kalaki yung iaalat nila sa isang private school? Kasi sa province, ganito. If you are in a locality, na may state you don nililimit nila ang grant na ibinibigay sa iyo yung allocation nililimit nila yon samantala kung nasa isang lugar ka private school ka at walang state you don ang laki-laki ng binibigay kahit yung private school na yon hindi naman capable mag-offer ng kahit anong program dahil very limited naman yung program nila so parang uh, Parang may, kwan, may problema doon, di ba? If this private school can offer quality education to more number of uh, enrollees, nagkataon lang na merong state you doon sa location niya, eh bakit hindi natin pagbigyan, di ba? Eh, yun lang naman yung naisip ko. No? Thank you. Ako po ang sasagot na una. Again, I'll refer to my experience as a regional director in one of, in fact, the biggest region in the whole country. Uh, yung Calabarzon um, serves 3.8 million of the 27 million in the whole country. Ang ginawa po namin, uh, mababagsik doon yung mga state universities. They actually um, passed a board of trustees resolution that they can, they will not accept learners who do not, um, whose whose track in senior high school do not uh, jibe with the courses they would like. 
So, hindi naman namin pwedeng awayin yung mga universities na nagsabi na hindi, we will not consider applicants from GAS who want to be engineers. They should be uh, uh, graduates of the STEM track. So, ang ginawa po namin, nag-organize kami ng bridging courses sa mga bata na talagang gusto mag-engineer later part of the senior high schooling para ma-qualify sila. So, we negotiated with the university, state university officials on how this could be addressed. Um, although, naniniw tama naman po yung sabi nyo sa Ched na call na yan kung, kung papayagan nila o hindi yung ano, but ako po ang feeling ko talaga, asang ayon din sa mga feedback na, na, nakita, na nakuha ko, pag nagkuha ng track yung bata, tapos yung course niya, sang ayon doon sa kanyang track sa senior high school, that child or that learner tends to perform better than the others na hindi nagkaroon ng ano. So, feeling ko, dapat talaga, ano, irrespeto rin. Sorry po, but I'm, 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 I don't know if I should be saying this, irrespeto rin yung ano, autonomy and academic freedom ng universities to determine who, should, who they should take and uh, I'm, who, who they should allow as enrollees in their programs. Pero, um, yun na nga po, ang isang talagang ingredient na na-mention ko kanina is a very effective guidance program. Para yung bata, pag pasok niya ng grade 11, alam niya na talaga, hindi na siya, although alam niyo naman to, in your universities before, prior to K-12, ang dari mi rin lumilipat-lipat ng courses, di ba? And uh, that's a reality na uh, hindi talaga ano, final ang decision ng bata hanggat hindi pa siya nakaka-graduate, so pabago-bago ng isip. But um, at least, kung properly guided sa pagpili ng career, baka naman, ano na. And then, yung pong issue nyo, bakit kasi gas lahat ino-offer? Uh, hindi naman po ganyan yung sinabi namin when we were planning for senior high school. We really made sure that the different tracks would be offered in certain areas. Although ang Talagang limited po ang slots, yung, yung arts, saka design and arts, saka yung sports. Kasi mahirap, ma malaki po ang investment doon ng government. Saka sa trend naman talaga, kaunti lang yan. Mga 1% lang yan ang cohort natin ang nandun. Pero yung tech voc, academic, tracks ay ano po, um, ini-encourage namin yung mga, mga, ano, mga paaralan na siguruhin na sa area yan, Mayroon talagang nag-o-offer ng STEM, mayroong um, humanities, mayroong tech voc, at lahat. Uh, although, yun ngang ibang mga high school na nagpilit na mag-offer ng ano, uh, senior high, pinakamadaling i-offer yung chapsoy. <laughs> Kasi kaunti-kaunti lang ng mga kung ano-ano ay pwede na. Pero, uh, nasabi ko na rin po that we are actually reviewing the curriculum now. So we will ano we'll consider your input sir as uh, we make decisions on how the the K to 12 curriculum particularly senior high would be configured so that it will be more responsive to the needs of the universities and the industry. Yeah. And the second question on the uh, provision of a scholarship through the TES. Um I have not talked with the, the Unifast on your question because we have talked before, right, sir? <laughs> Nagusap kami ni Engineer Villaverde before, the other week, and I uh, have not talked with the, the Unifast. On that, siguro, sir, I could give you uh, an answer after this uh, activity because I will be going home. And uh, so Thursday, I'll be in, in the office. Hindi ako, hindi ko alam kung paano nila... Paano nila kinukompute kung ilan ang um, slots for its TES na scholarship grants? Uh, Inacknowledge ko kasi paano ni... May tanong pa po kayo? Okay na? Okay. Sige pa, okay. Uh, time check po, alas stress na. So, kahiyahiyaman sa inyo. Kailangan na nating uh, mag... Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, so uh, we would like to really um, acknowledge and appreciate our uh, discussants and all the uh, all of our participants. So just to synthesize, uh, we have uh, seen that the we and uh, 
uh, acknowledge naman ni USEC that we have problems with the basic up to the SA, SHS uh, education system. But he, uh, he appreciate niya na na-invita na natin siya dito to get the feedback from us and he is inviting us to, uh, to help them in the reviewing of the learning materials. And of course, uh, na, na discuss din po yung mga napakaraming units natin, yung GEC at saka yung na reduce pa yung ating engineering units. Uh, but uh, I think it's, uh, it's time to really come up with teaching and learning innovation so that we can address this uh, better. Uh, I think that marami pang iba tayong na discuss, pero yun na lang muna. And uh, I would like to say thank you. Thank you to uh, and Dean Laurito and the uh, Yusik Antonio and uh, Ma'am Nanda and uh, uh, Engineer Fred. Bibigay din po tayo ng certificate uh, and I'd like to call our president. Basahin ko lang po yung uh, citation. Certificate of Appreciation. This certificate is hereby presented to for his her invaluable contribution as forum discussion during the International Conference on Engineering Education. Philippines 2019 with the theme Reengineering, Engineering Education, Shifting Gears, Powering Up, and Leading the Way. Giving, uh, given this 21st day of October 2019 at Grand Sing Imperial Hotel, Iloilo City, Philippines. Signed, Evelyn Q. Lugindin, uh, First Vice President Paez, and uh, Engineer Danny C. Molina, President Paez. Yes. This one is uh, for uh, Engineer Fernandina J. Kalimli. Also, Engineer Federico A. Monsada. Thank you, sir, friend. Dr. Diosdado M. San Antonio and Engineer Alberto A. Laurito. Kami pun selamat ulit. Good afternoon to everyone. We would like now to invite you to the parallel uh, paper sessions. The uh, snacks will be served at the venue for the parallel sessions. For, the, for reference of everyone, session one on engineering education one, that will be in Coral One. And then uh, session two, uh, engineering research one, will be held in Ruby 1. And then session 3 on engineering research 2 will be here in uh, main hall, uh, Jade A and B. And then the final session on the fourth session on engineering education 2 will be in Ruby 2. So Ruby 1, Ruby 2, and Coral 1 are rooms near the elevator. So you can actually use the attachment in the program to choose which session you are going to attend. So again, snacks will be served on the venue of the session. Thank you very much. Also, to remind our participants about the fellowship night at 6 to 8 p.m. in this uh, ballroom. So, from the parallel sessions, 
please uh, be back to this uh, ballroom for our fellowship night. So we will.